Amen. Good morning, church. Good to see you this morning, this wonderful rainy Sunday morning. I hope you're all safe this morning, having a wonderful day so far. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining with us this morning to worship the Lord. Uh, I know we're maybe been a minute or so late getting on this morning, but I was standing back at the phone and uh, standing behind it and watching all of you come on and uh, get online to, to watch this this um, this service this morning. Boy, I was tell you, I, it's, it's almost like I can see your faces as you're walking in this door this morning, and uh, it's a blessing. And I miss, I miss seeing you come through those doors. But uh, as I was watching on the phone, I could see each and every one of you getting on and starting to say hello. And uh, boy, it's just a blessing this morning to be with you. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, worshiping with us this morning. I, I, I pray that this service will be a blessing to you. Uh, I pray that it will not only be a blessing, I pray that, I always pray that this will bless you, the, the words and the singing and the sermon that the Lord has prepared, it will be a blessing to your heart. But I pray today that the Word of God would change us, and the Word of God will mold us, and the Word of God will make us what He wants us to be. That's uh, the purpose of this Word, is to, to conform us to the image of Christ. And I pray this morning that uh, as we preach and as we sing, that we would all have a desire to draw more and be more like Christ in our daily walks with Him. Amen. So I'm so thankful for you being here. Hey, listen, I got just a couple of announcements this morning. Don't forget to, uh, to you know, if the Lord puts upon your heart to send in your tithe, we've had the Givelify app on, online that you can give through. Uh, if you're interested in doing that type of giving, please do that. We also have the P.O. box that you can send your uh, tithe directly into the church. Uh, it's on our Facebook page. You can look and see those and uh, make sure that you are, are able to get your tithe in. Please, uh, I, I, I ask you, be faithful to your tithes. God's been faithful to us, and uh, we are to be faithful to the work of God. And uh, this is just to continue what God has done in our church. And this church has done so much uh, here lately to help those in need. And uh, that tithe money goes to do that and to continue the work of God. So be much in prayer about that. I got a couple of thank you cards I want to read to you this morning. This, this card says, thank you. Thank you for the beautiful flowers and your prayers. It's from Miss Joey Allen. And the card says, during a time like this, we learn how much our family and friends really mean to us. Your expression of sympathy will always be remembered. The family of Lucille Newsom. So we thank you so much for Miss Joy for sending that. You continue to pray for that family as you uh, go to the Lord in prayer each day. I have another one also here. Uh, we got in the mail from the Pregnancy Resource Center. Uh, it says this. It says, Dear Ephesus, the Pregnancy Resource Center would like to thank you for continuing to supply or to support our center. We appreciate you being a part of our largest fundraiser of the year, the Baby Bottle Boomerang. We want to ensure our churches uh, use our continuing <clears throat> to see our serve clients during this time of uncertainty. We had a baby um, tried yesterday. May God bless you all. Or we had a baby saved yesterday. Praise the Lord for that. I'm sorry I couldn't hardly read the writing. But it says we had a baby saved yesterday, one that was headed for an abortion. And through this giving, through this resource center, who a life was saved. Praise the Lord for that. Man, what a, what a blessing. So uh, thank you, church, for supporting <clears throat> the baby bottle boomerang. It was a great success this time. We appreciate the Pregnancy Resource Center for doing that awesome work here in our community. I've got two... Um, Missionary letters this morning, and I'm so thankful. I'm not going to read them to you. I'm just going to tell you, Brother John Shelley and uh, his wife sent their, their monthly missionary letter. And uh, be much in prayer. Next week will be our missions offering. We'll take up our mission offering through the same, uh, through online and through sending it in. But uh, they sent a, a praise report through their, their praise letter. We also have one from the Hendersons, uh, Brother Chris and Sister Elena. I'm not going to read them to you this morning. I'm going to wait and give those off to our missions director, Brother Edward and Miss Cindy, and we'll let them read them to you 
and uh, share the good news from the mission field. But I did get to talk to Brother John Shelley yesterday. I was able to talk to him, and uh, he wanted me to tell the church, thank you so much for all the support you've done and how you continue to move and the work that, that you gave to is ongoing in Africa right now. Uh, they have purchased another motorcycle with some of the funds that was left over from the first motorcycle. It's going to a church right now in uh, Africa, and it will be used uh, to, to minister in that country. So what a wonderful thing. And also there is a container full of Bibles and through a, a different stuff that's on its way over there now, and it'll be there soon. So he wanted me to say thank you, and he's praying for the church, and may God bless him. We're praying for Brother John and his wife as well and all of his ministry. Uh, I talked to Brother John Alves here the last few weeks. He sent me an email and uh, just again you know, wanted to just thank the, the church for what they did and the, the great missions revival we had. So thankful for him. Talked to Brother Mike regularly, Brother Mike Van Horn, and uh, he's doing well as, as, as well. And the Hendersons were so thankful for them and their work they're doing in Honduras. They have not got to go back yet, so uh, continue to pray for that. And that time of prayer, uh, that time that they get to return to the work that they've gone to do. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Boy, I'm just so thankful for the good, good spirit that we've already felt here this day. And I pray that you feel it where you are, each and every, every person and every family that's gathered around uh, a TV or around a phone or a device this morning watching. May God bless you and may God richly uh, just give you great feelings this morning as we worship him. We've got some great singing for you this morning. Can't wait. Uh, Brother Tim Heron is going to play. Miss Patricia is going to sing. And uh, so we're so thankful to have them. Thankful to have Miss Hannah here with us this morning. Hey, man, I, I tell you, one of the great perks about this is we've got somebody new each week to come and sing. And uh, boy, it's helped my heart just to see them. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. And I want you to know that it's coming soon. We're going to see all of you. Amen. We're going to open these doors back up and we're going we're gonna to worship. We're going to praise the Lord, and we're going to just have a wonderful time, and because uh, God's moving, God's turning the tide of this thing that we're in, and uh, we give Him glory for that. Amen. Well, without further ado, this morning we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to ask Brother Tim, Miss Patricia, to come up and play and sing for you, and may God use them in a mighty way. Let's pray. Lord, we love you today. We thank you so much for this time, Lord, that you've given us. God, we pray that you just use it for your honor and your glory. God, we pray that everything that you would have to be done this morning, Lord, that you would do it. Lord, we'd submit ourselves to you. We do submit to you, God. We surrender this morning. The Lord asks you to use us in the way that you'd have us to be used for your honor and your glory. God, I pray that you'd anoint the preaching this morning. I pray that you'd just fill it with the Holy Ghost. I pray that you'd anoint the singing this morning, God. I pray that you just uh, touch the voice of Miss Patricia and touch the playing of Mr. Tim, God. I pray that you just give them uh, a liberty like they've never had to before to sing your praises and your glory this morning. God, we know there's so many that need our prayers in our communities and, Lord, in our, in our state and our nation. God, we pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders. We pray for all those that are still battling. But we praise your holy name this morning, God, that you're turning the tide, Lord, that you're, you're healing a nation. God, you're healing a people this morning, and we know that. We know that that healing is coming from you. And, Lord, we give you praise and honor for today. We just ask you to continue to do it. Lord, heal us completely and let us turn unto you in these final days. God, we love you. We ask you to touch all our visitors that are visiting this morning through Facebook. God, just touch them in a mighty way. God, just uh, fill their hearts with goodness, Lord, and speak to our hearts directly, God. Uh, Lord, and conform us and change us to how you have us to be. Lord, that we might walk uh, according to your word and according to your will. We love you. We ask you to lead God direct us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, Miss Patricia and Brother T.
Amen. Aren't you thankful for the shelter of his loving arms this morning? Amen. What beautiful singing and playing this morning. Thank you so very much for bringing that song and bringing that, that sweet message in there. I tell you, there's nothing in this world that God can't shelter us from. Amen. There's nothing in this world that God can't get us through. <laughs> there's nothing in this world that we can't overcome through Jesus Christ who has overcome death, hell, and the grave. And I'm thankful that when the times get hard and the times get tough, we can just shelter in the arms of God. I, I, I think about that little mother hen and she would take her, her chicks and she had newborn chicks and when someone would threaten her or someone would threaten her chicks or if there was a storm or whatever may come to pass, she would take those, those wings and she would blow them out and those chicks would run up under there and she would shelter them. From anything that would harm them. Hey, and I'm going to tell you here this morning, praise God, that's what God does to you and I. And I don't know about you, but I can attest to times that I've been sheltered in his arms in the midst of a storm. I've been sheltered in his, his loving arms in the midst of trials. But also, I'm thankful for sheltering in his arms in times of goodness. Say, man, hey, it ain't just in the bad times that he shelters us. It's in all times he shelters us. And, uh, boy, there's safety in his arms this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Boy, it's good to be in the Lord's house. Good to, to feel his presence in this place this morning. If you got your Bibles this morning, please turn with me to the book of Joshua. To the book of Joshua, chapter number 24. We're going to be reading a very familiar text this morning. Many of you probably know this verse by heart, or these two verses by heart. Uh, and it's a, a wonderful text, but I want to share with you the, the thought that the Lord has laid upon my heart for this day. And uh, let me say this, as we've been preparing each week to bring you the message, it's our desire to bring you uh, especially what God wants you to hear. Not what's easy to preach, not what, uh, what is a, a good message or something to get a lot of likes and a lot of shares, but I want to tell you this morning, uh, I want you to, uh, I, my desire is to preach what God needs us to hear in these times. And I pray this morning, and I know this morning, with all, without a shadow of a doubt, this is the message that God would have us to hear this morning. And I pray that you hear this message this morning. I pray that you take it to heart this morning. I pray that you would let the Word of God mold you into what He'd have you to be. And I pray that it'll be a blessing to you, and I pray it'll be a glory to God this morning. Joshua, chapter number 24. Uh, verse number 14, it says, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the God of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm going to say that again. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you this day as humbly as we know how. Thank you so much for the opportunity to preach your word, God. I pray, I thank, I'm so thankful for this blessed word and what it means to me. God how it helps me each day. Pray that you'd help somebody with it today, God. I pray that you'd use it, Lord, to, to, to call somebody under repentance this morning. And I pray that you'd use it, Lord, to, to put a, a, a backslider, Lord, Lord, back on the right path. Lord, I pray that you'd just uh, move hearts this morning, change hearts this day. Lord, I pray for your filling of the Holy Spirit this morning. I pray that you'd be with me, God. I pray that you'd give me the power and hide me behind the cross. And Lord, I pray that you get all the glory. And the honor for what takes place in this in this this uh, place this morning, I pray for boldness to preach the truth. I pray for the right spirit to preach it in God. Lord, let it come from a spirit of love, Lord, and concern. Lord, let you be glorified and be lifted up. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that He died on the cross. Lord, thank you that He got up out of that tomb. We're still rejoicing in that today. God, I pray that you use this message for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Uh, I want to preach on this thought this morning, the, a crossroads of decision. A crossroads of decision. I believe with all my heart this morning that we as a nation, we as a people, we as a church, 
We are at a crossroad of decision. We have come through a lot of many things in our life and we're going through some things right now. But I say here today, if this is the day. This is what Joshua said as he was speaking to the people. He said, choose you this day. This is the day of decision. This is the day that you need to make a decision for Christ if you're lost. This is the day you need to make a decision for commitment if you are saved and, you're, and, and you know the Lord. This is the day to commit and say, Lord, I'm going to live for you more than I've ever lived for you today. This is a day for us as a nation, the United States of America, to turn back to our roots, to go back to what we were founded upon, the gospel and the principles of the Word of God, and worship God, and walk according to the way of God this morning. It is a crossroads of decision. I'm thankful for Joshua, the book of Joshua. Joshua was a great man of God. He was called. He, he stepped into a place of leadership after Moses passed off the scene. How many of you know that God always has somebody else that ready to step up and to lead and to take over? And Joshua was that person that came after Moses. He led his people into the promised land. He conquered. He claimed that victory. I want you to know this morning that Joshua is a book that shows us a perfect picture and a perfect record of the victorious Christian life. You say, well, how do I live victoriously in Christ today? Read the book of Joshua. It'll show you the game plan. It'll show you the blueprint of how to live victorious in the power of God. And it is by obedience. It is by listening to the word of God. God came to Joshua many times through this book and gave him the blueprint to conquer that nation or to conquer that promised land. And as long as Joshua was obedient, as long as Joshua listened and the people listened to the word of God, they were always victorious. Can I tell you this morning, church, if we'll just listen to his word, amen, if we'll just read his word, if we'll just apply his word, we can live victorious today in the good news of the gospel of Jesus. Christ. We can live victorious today in the midst of a pandemic. We can live victorious today in the midst of troubles and trials God, because we have the victorious Christian life. Boy, I'm thankful for this. This morning, Joshua, in our text, he's about to pass off the scene. He, he's, he has lived his life. He has served his Lord. And now God's about to call him into glory. But he wants to, he has a great concern in his heart to share with the people. He has a concern that once he's gone, they'll quit living for God. They'll go back and live the way that they used to live. That they go back and serve the gods of those uh, in Egypt or serve those gods of those that were surrounding them. And he had a great desire for them to make a commitment, to make a choice. To serve the Lord thy God. How can I tell you, church, we need to make that choice today. Uh, nation, can I say this? We need to make that choice today. Our nation needs more than ever to choose and to make a choice. And this day, choose to serve the Lord my God. But I want you to know, that has to be a personal choice this morning. This is what Joshua said. He says, you need to choose this day whom you will serve. Either serve the gods of this world or the little G gods. Or he said, serve the God of all glory. He said, but this is a personal choice. I encourage you to serve God, Jehovah God. But I'm here to tell you, I can't make that choice for you. But he says, as for me and my house, amen, as for me, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm here to tell you this morning, this is a personal choice that you have to make to serve the Lord. I'm going to make that choice. I'm going to go on record this morning and say I'm going to make that choice and serve God and all that we go through and all the difficulties of life. Hey, listen, there's no difficulty that God has not took us through that he's not used for our good and for his glory. I'm here to tell you we need to make that choice. Would you make that choice this morning? Would you make the choice to serve God, to live for God, to, to do what God has called us to do? I'm thankful for the choice that Joshua made. He said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. But I can't make that choice for you. You can't make that choice for me. It has to be a personal decision. It has to be a personal choice. But you're at that point. You're at that crossroads of that decision this morning. Will you choose to serve the Lord? I want you to know that the book of Joshua shows us that how is God, how God is faithful to give us victory over any circumstance. Hey, listen, every, the children of Israel went through a lot of stuff when they conquered the promised land. 
But God was able to provide victory over every circumstance, over every enemy, over any trial, over any temptation, as long as they followed the plan God had given, they had victory. Can I tell you it's the same way today? You and I have the, we have the game plan for a victorious life. Just follow the word of God. He's still giving us victory today. I want to say this this morning. Do you know he's still giving us victory every day? It's there for the claimant. Do you know when he gave them that promised land? He said, listen, children of Israel, that's your land. I gave it to Abraham. I gave it to, his, uh, to Isaac. I gave it to Jacob. And it is yours. It is promised. All you got to do is go claim it. Can I hear? I'm here to tell you this morning. I want you to know that He's given us victory over everything that you go through. You just got to claim it. When somebody claimed the victory this morning, somebody claimed victory over the, tri the trials and the problems that you're going through. Hey, as a church, as a nation, let's claim victory over this disease. Amen. We have the victory. We hit. God has given us victory. Let's claim it this day. He's still providing that if we'll be obedient. I'm thankful for today that he is giving us victory over this disease. You say, well, what do you mean, preacher? There's still people all over this nation that are sick. Yeah, that's right, there are. But infections are going down. If you watch the news at all lately, you've seen that the infection rate is going down, that the death rate is going down, that those that are finding out different things from this plague, they're all going down. Hey, listen, we've turned, God has turned the tide of this thing. That doesn't mean we can go back and go back to doing everything like we all did before. We have to take precautions, but I'm here to tell you, God has given victory this morning. I want you to know, I'm going to go on the record and say this. I'm thankful for the ones that have helped turn the tide. Uh, the, the medical workers. Well, whoa, what would we do, nation? What would we do, church, without those that were willing to go stand in the fight? Hey, listen, on, on, on many occasions, there have been those that have volunteered to go fight a war somewhere. But I'm here to tell you those healthcare workers have been fighting a war just like anybody else. They've been fighting a war against this, this virus. But I'm here to tell you I'm thankful for them because they've helped turn the tide. I'm thankful for the ones in uh, the positions of authority. Boy, they make some hard decisions, but decisions to protect the people. I'm thankful they made them. They're about to have to make some more hard decisions about when to open everything back up. But listen, God will give them that guidance. God will give them the, the, the discernment to make the right decisions. But I will tell you this. We need to be careful not to be so filled with pride and so filled with arrogance as some are in this country. And look and see what God has done and try to take the, the credit for it. We've all seen on the news this week what has taken place. Up in, in New York, the, the governor came out and he took claim, he, he took credit for everything that good that happened up there. He said it wasn't God, it wasn't faith, it wasn't faith, and it was him. It was us that did that. I'm here to tell you it was a God of glory that heard the prayers of his people that began to turn the tide of this thing. You better give him glory this morning, church, for it's God that has heard our cries. It is God that has uh, uh, delivered us from this thing. Let's give him glory this morning. Well, I'm thankful for the hope we have. It's God that made the difference. Amen goes right there. I'll say it if nobody else will. It's God that has made the difference. We stand here this morning, April the 19th of 2020, with a hope for a future. Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you, a couple of months ago, there was a lot of folks that didn't have no hope. There was a lot of folks that didn't have any... That, they, they didn't know if this, we was going to get through this or not. But I'm here to tell you, we got hope this morning for a future because of a God in glory that heard our call. My heart was filled last week as we worshiped and we, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Jesus Christ, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My heart was filled all day as I sat and watched different men of God proclaim the gospel that the tomb was still empty and Jesus was still alive. What gave me a hope? Uh, for the future that gave me a hope for what we have to come. What a hope we have in Jesus. But did you know that the hope Jesus provided when he got up from the grave, did you know the hope that he gives us when he arose from the dead and he conquered death, hell, and the grave? Uh, he is all dependent upon a decision, upon a choice. Hey, listen, if you want to claim the hope that we have in Jesus, you, you've got to make a choice. You've got to choose to be obedient to him. You've got to choose to follow him. Everything. I want you to know something this morning. Let me say this. 
Because of his work in the past, because of Jesus' work on the cross, because he got up out of the grave, he's given us, because of his work in the past, he has given us a hope for the future. He's not only given us a hope for the future, but he's given us power for the present. Amen. He's given us power to live. But all that, every bit of that, hinges on a decision we have to make by faith to follow him. This is what Jesus said each and every time he came to someone. Uh, when he called his disciples, he said, follow me. And they had to make a decision whether they're going to stay where they're at or where they were going to get up and follow. Hey, he's still making that same call this morning. There's some of you who's got to make a decision. Some of you need to make that decision today to follow me and believe on him. To lay hope on, to lay hold upon that hope. It takes a decision. Are you willing to make that decision? I want to tell you, it's the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. Is the decision to follow him. We must choose this day whom we will serve. There's a lot of people that marvel at this choice. They marvel. They wonder that we have to make this choice. But I'm here to tell you the marvelous thing is not that we must choose. The marvelous thing is that we get to choose. I'm here to tell you this morning, God's not going to make you do anything you don't want to do. God's not going to make, he's not calling slaves, he's calling servants this morning, amen. He's not going to make you do it. Uh, you get to choose to follow him. You get to choose life. You get to choose eternity in heaven if you make that choice. But you also have the free will to make the choice to not accept it. I want to, I'm, I'm here to tell you this morning, you, don't, you do not want to make that decision. You want to choose to follow God because it leads to life and eternity. The choice not to follow Him leads to death and destruction for all of eternity. I promise you, the greatest choice you'll ever make is to receive the Lord Jesus. But we've got to make a choice. We celebrated the empty tomb last week. But what are you going to do with it? I want to ask that question this morning. What are you going to do with the empty tomb? Are you going to choose by faith to follow Jesus Christ? To live in his victory. To live in his glory. Are you going to choose to continue to live like you've always lived? There's some of you, church, I'm preaching to you, to you this morning as well. Some of you made that decision long, long ago. Some of you have been faithful throughout the years to serve him, to, to follow him, to fight for him. Oh, to serve him when the times are bad, to serve him when the times are good. You've been faithful. And I'm going to tell you, whenever, whenever that time comes, when we pass off this life into the next, those that have submitted their lives and, and given their lives to follow them and made that choice to follow the Lord, they'll hear these words, Well done, my good and faithful servant. So I want to say this this morning. No, for those of you that are have, that have made that choice, keep on keeping on. Amen. Hope brother Lynn, uh, brother Lynn Janney says this to me all the time. He says, "Just keep holding the plow." I'm here to tell you this morning, Christian. Just keep holding the plow. Keep plowing the road. Keep doing what God has called you to do because you're doing a great work for His honor and for His glory. What a blessed time! What a blessed time it is. We all have that choice. To make, we're at that crossroads of decision. I've heard many say this lately. Of course, listen, I, I understand where we're all at. We're all cooped up in our house. We're all ready to get out. We're all ready to go things to go back like they were before. And I've heard people say this: I can't wait for things to go back to normal. I can't wait. So we can go back the way we used to be or that things do like they, they want to be or like we used to do. And I understand that sentiment. Listen, I want you to understand, I understand that sentiment. I understand that completely. But I understand the desire to get out of lockdown and go do the things that we like to do, the things that we enjoy to do. But if we believe what we were in before this was normal, we've lost our minds. I want you to listen to me here just for a moment. Listen to this little country preacher. What we came from when we came before this virus came was not a normal time. It was not a normal circumstance. That was not normal. You say, well, what do you tell me? What do you mean it wasn't normal? Hey, listen, normal tells me that if we were normal then and we had a world had major problems. You say, well, that was normal. You tell me, listen, I want to ask you this. You tell me this morning, what's normal about a nation murdering 
623,000 unborn babies in a year's time through abortion. I'm going to tell you something right now. Hey, listen, there ain't nothing normal about that. That is wicked. That is defiling. And I, I'm here to tell you, there may be some judgment that has came to this nation because of that. That ain't normal this morning. What's normal? To claim, did you know more than God knows? When he born you into this world, when you came into this world as a certain sex, and you say, well, God was wrong, and I'm right, I want to be something else. That's not normal, brothers and sisters. There's nothing normal about that. That's just nature. That is God's way. And you're saying, God, I know more than you know. That ain't normal. What's normal about children being raised by technology because parents are so busy with their other lives? That ain't normal. Can I tell you what's normal? What you've been experiencing in the last couple of months when you've been locked down with your kids and you've been in the house eating supper with them at the supper table. You've been laying them down in the bed at night and saying your prayers with them. That's normal, amen. But what we had before is not normal. What's normal? Somebody tell me what's normal about a 50% divorce rate in this, in this country. That ain't normal. What's normal about a culture of homosexuality where it is, it is celebrated? Where it is, it, when if you take a stand on the word of God against it, you are looked down on and you're called names. You're labeled things because you took a stand. That ain't normal, folks. What's normal about a generation of the wisest and the greatest among us. Those old, uh, those, those old saints of God that's had the gray hair, that's went through the depression, that's went through the world wars, that's went through all those things, that's went through Vietnam. What's normal about casting them off and forgetting about them? Hey, I'm here to tell you that ain't normal today. What's normal about all of that? I'm here to tell you if that's normal, I don't want to go back. I just assume to stay like we are. I just assume to go back to what my normal is right now because God, God help us, that ain't normal. Hey, let's go back to God. Let's go back to where he has called us to be, where our world and our country and our lives go from here where we depend upon the choices we make, where we depend upon the things of God. That's normal. Boy, let's go back to God. We want to see God do something great. Let's go back to God. I, I read this quote today, and I want to read it to you. Our lives are a sum total of the choices we make. I say amen right there. Some of the choices we made has been good. Some of them, not so good. In my life, I'll just give you my little testimony. I've made some bad choices. I've made a lot of bad choices in my life. And a lot of places I am and the things I deal with today are because of choices I made bad choices I made. But we're all, our lives are a sum of the choices we make. For others, there are many choices that we would change. Someone said this, if you want to change your life, then just change your choices. I say amen right. right there. If you want to change your life, just change some of your choices. Can I tell, can I, can I share a story with you this morning, really quick, in the book of Isaiah? Y'all remember the, a man and Isaiah, a king named Hezekiah? Hezekiah was in, in the book of Isaiah. He was a, 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 a king in Israel. And it says this, that Hezekiah uh, was sick unto death. He had been living wickedly. He had been doing things against God. He was sick unto death. And then Isaiah came to him and said, You need to get your house in order, Hezekiah, because you're about to die. You ain't going to live any longer. I want you to see what it says in Isaiah chapter 38, verse 2. It says, Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Amen. He prayed and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart and had done all that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto the days 15 years. Amen. He added 15 years to the life of Hezekiah. Can I tell you, we don't know what God's going to do. I've been saying this, God can come back any second, and he can, and he might. But I'll say this, there's no telling what God will do if this nation turns unto him. 
There's no telling if he'll give us more years or if he'll give us more time or if he'll give us more souls if we'll just turn to him. But we got that choice to make today. We've got to make that choice. If we want to change our life, let's change our choices. We need to choose as Joshua did and follow the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Listen, he says this day, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, he says, Now is the day of salvation. Listen, I don't know if God will prolong this, this nation. I don't know if God will tarry any longer or Jesus will tarry in heaven any longer. So if you're lost this morning, this needs to be the day. This is the day of salvation. You need to make that choice today. You don't need to put it off. You may make that choice today and you might get to live in those wonderful years that he uh, extends if he does, if he sees fit to do it. You may be able to live in the peace and the happiness of God. You need to make that choice today. Or it may be that God's going to come back. <coughs> Excuse me. It may be that he comes back tomorrow. You need to make that choice today. Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 16 says this. <coughs> see, thee, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. He says, be you walk carefully, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. It's time for us to redeem some time and make full use of the time God has given us. And you need to call on it. I know what some of you are saying this morning. You're saying, yeah, Brother Kevin, but why? Why should I follow God? Why should I do that? I'm going to give you three quick reasons. I'm going to be really quick with these. Three reasons why you should follow God this morning. Three reasons why you need to make that choice to serve the Lord today. Number one, because of God's goodness in the past. As Joshua began to tell these people, uh, tell Israel how they should serve God. He went back and he gave them a history lesson uh, of why they should do that. And he went back all the way to Abraham and he began to show them how good God had been unto them, how he called Abraham and he made unto him a people, how he took care of them when they were down in bondage in Egypt, how he brought them out of Egypt, how he parted the Red Sea how he saw them through the wilderness and how he gave them this expected end and how he gave them this promised land. Hey, listen, I'm here to tell you. He, he said, listen, God's been good to you. Hey, let me say this this morning. God's been good to us this morning. Let's take a little walk down memory lane for our nation. I remember back many, I don't remember, but I've read about it in my history books so many years ago when there was a nation, when there was a group of people that were persecuted because they could not serve and worship a God. They decided to get on a boat and come to a piece of ground where they could uh, serve God in freedom and in happiness and they made a nation there. And I'm here to tell you God has seen this nation through so many times because it was founded upon the word of God. Those men had enough knowledge and enough discernment to know that if this nation was going to be anything it's going to be because God. That's why we have in God we trust on our money. It's why we have in God we trust in our constitution. It's why God is all over everything in this nation. Can I tell you God's been good to this nation. We are the greatest nation on the face of the planet because of God, because God's been good to us. Hey, but here lately we've turned our backs on God. We try to take him out of everything and cast him out from here, but it's time to make a choice to put him back in because God's been good to us in the past. But I'm here to tell you today, it ain't just a nation. It's also personally. I want you to think back right now as I'm speaking to what God has done for you in your life. Personally, in your past. Oh man, God's been so good to us. God's been good to me. He gave me a mom and a daddy that loved me. He gave me a, a mom and a daddy that took me to church. And when I was nine years old, he began to speak to my heart. He began to say, I love you. Hey, and he called me unto his and, and unto salvation. And he saved my heart and he washed me in the blood. Hey, and every step forward, he's been good to me through every step of the way. All the way to now, he's been good. Hey, listen, he's got me out of things that I got myself in that I had no business getting out of because of his goodness and because of his grace. He saw me through. He took me out of a horrible pit and set my feet upon a rock this morning. Hey, I'm telling you, God's been good this morning. Some of you, all of you here that's listening today, you could say that, that God's been good. Hey, in my life. Hey, man, I'm so thankful. 
I've been listening to a lot of gospel music the last few days, and I, I, I've heard that song, God's Been Good. I've also heard this song, I've Been Through Enough. Boy, that's become one of my favorites really fast. But that word, that song says, I've been through enough to know that he'll be enough for me. <laughs> I've been through enough in my past to know that God will be enough for me in the future. Why should you follow God? Because God's been good to you in your past. If you don't know the Lord today, you can still look back and see how God has protected you and how God has kept you and how God has, has been good to you. If you're a sinner, you deserve a devil's hell. But God's been good. He's seen you this far. Maybe because today is the day that you'll be saved. For all of us saints that know the Lord, and those of us that are saved, God has been so good. Why else should I follow the Lord? Because of God's promise for a future. Hey, listen, God has given us an inheritance. Uh, God has given us something so grand and so wonderful. We can't even imagine. And if God has promised us a future. If we know it, if we believe in him, in heaven for all of eternity. God has given us a promise for the future. He talks about that in Titus chapter number 2 verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that we that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people jealous zealous of good works boy he's been good to us he's got a planned future for us uh, the Bible says in John chapter number 14 he says this he says let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you he says I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place I will return and receive you unto myself and whether I go you know not uh, there you may be with me also and whether I go you know and you know the way he also says there in John chapter 14 verse number 6 I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. He's prepared a place for you in heaven, but he's also prepared the way for you if you'll just believe in him. He's the way. He's, he's promised a future. I'm thankful for the future that we have. Just keep holding on. Just keep believing of the promise of the future. And finally this morning, I want you to see man's responsibility for the present. Why should I serve God? Because God's been good to us in the past. Because God's going to be good to us in the future. Listen, because God's been involved with us in the past. Let's just know that he'll be involved with us in the future. But that leaves you and I with a responsibility. A responsibility for the present. While we're still here, we have a responsibility to live for God. I'm going to make a shocking statement right here. And I'm going to wrap it up. Some of you are going to gasp when I say this. But this is the statement I want to say. What God does for his people depends upon what the people do for God. Some of you are like, oh, Brother Kevin, we're, it's all by grace. I do, I get everything. And you're right, we do get everything by grace. It's all by grace and faith. But can I tell you, it's also by obedience. It's also by being obedient to his word. There's certain, th certain things that are guaranteed to us by our new birth. And I want you to think about this as you think about, if you have children, think about your children. There's some different things that you guarantee just because they are your child, that they're guaranteed to just because they are your child. God, because we are his children, will always love us. He'll always love us, no matter how much we fail, no matter how much we, 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 we mess up, no matter how much we don't do what he says he wants us to do, we, he still will love us. That will never stop. He can never love us more than he does right now. He can never love us less. God will never stop loving you. That's the same way you are about your kids. Your kids can do whatever. Hey, listen, we don't want them to make bad mistakes and we don't want them to make bad choices. But any parent that's had a child that made a bad choice knows this. Just because they made that bad choice does not make you stop loving them. Hey, listen, it's the same way with God. He also uh, will always protect us. He will protect us and we will be sheltered 
in his loving arms. As Miss Patricia sang about earlier today. Hey listen. He'll always give us protection. Because your children are yours. You're going to always protect them. Some of you mamas. When somebody comes after them. Or something comes after them. Or somebody's mean to them. That mama bear comes out of you. You know what I'm talking about. They, some of you ought to raise your hand right now. Because somebody uh, gets mean with your child. Mama bear is coming out. Because you are going to protect them at all costs. Some of you men are the same way. You're going to protect your family. You're going to protect your children. Even if it means giving your life. God's the same way. He's going to protect us. He's going to supply our needs. How many of y'all know Sometimes in this last few weeks, it's been hard to supply your kids' needs, amen. They've been eating everything in the house, praise God. I mean, grocery bills went from, from $100 a week to $1,000 a week because they won't stop eating. But you know what? No matter what you've got to do, you're going to supply that need. You have to go dig a ditch or if you have to go get, uh, get some food out of a food bank somewhere, you're going to supply their need because they're your child. How many of you know how much more can God supply our need? Because we're his. Amen. The Bible says he'll supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. But, there's a but here. Certain blessings only come through obedience and service. How many of y'all know you're going to protect your children? You're going to supply their needs, their eats and their things, their shoes, their clothes. You're going to supply all those things. You're going to love them no matter what. But if they don't clean their room and they don't take out the trash and they don't do those chores that you give for them to do, they ain't getting no old Debbie cakes next time you go to the, to the grocery store. They're not getting that Nintendo game or that, that, that PSP game that they want so bad. They're not getting that new pair of shoes. They've got to do certain things so you'll give them the blessings that they want. God's the same way with you and me. There are certain things that we have to do if we want to receive the blessings and the goodness of God in our life. He's going to take care of all of us all these times, but if we want extra blessings, we've got to do what God has called us to do. Number one is work by the Word of God. We've got to walk by the Word of God. This is what Joshua said in Joshua chapter number one. He said this in verse number seven. He says this, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from the, to, from the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou shalt observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then that thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. You know what God said there? He said if you want good success, if you want a prosperous way, he says meditate on my word. Live by, your, by my word. Let it mold you into what I want you to be. And he said if you'll do that, oh, if you'll just read my word, if you'll live by my word, if you'll walk by my word, thy way will be prosperous and you'll have good success. You know why some of us ain't very successful? Because we ain't meditating on His Word. Because we're not filling our lives with His Word. So that those that have done that will testify. It will bring goodness. It will bring success in all that you do. Psalms chapter 119 verse 9 says, Whither shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Joshua 27 uh, excuse me, Joshua 23, verses 7 and 8 says this. Number two, we've got to live, uh, walk by His Word, but we've got to live a separated life. He says in verse 7 and 8, he says this. He says, That ye come not among these nations, that these that remain among you, neither make mention of my name, uh, name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them, but cleave unto the Lord your God, as you have done unto this day. He's saying, listen, God's people have been called out, and we've been separated. If some of y'all don't already realize this, we're a little different, amen, and that's a good thing. That's by design. He's called us out to be different. He's called us out not to blend in with the world, but to stand out from the world. Daniel was like that. Don't blend in. I tell you, it's also time for us to separate. For so long, back when we thought that was normal, 
Too many of God's people just blended in with the world. It's time to step out and be sanctified and be separated unto God, for God, by God. He says, be ye holy, for I am holy. It's time for God's people to get holy. It's time for God's people to get committed. It's time for God's people to do what his word says to do. You want to see the blessings of God in your life? Just take these steps and use them. I promise you, they'll work for you. Lastly, we've got to put God in his proper place. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Back when we said things were normal, you know what God got out of a lot of our lives? Listen, I know this ain't popular this morning. I know this ain't one of those messages that oh, just makes, you, makes your heart feel so good. But if we'll listen to it, I promise you it'll help us. You know where God's place was in a lot of our lives back when we thought it was normal? He got whatever was left over. He got the leftovers of everything we had. If we had some time left over on the weekend, we'd go to church. If we had some time left over in our day, we might read our Bible. If we had some leftover uh, money, we might give it to the church. That ain't God's proper place, folks. I want you to know that. God's proper place is first and foremost in our life. He don't want to be the leftovers. He wants to have your first fruits. He wants the first of your time. He wants the first of your money. He wants the first. You know why? Because it's all his to start with. If we'll give him in his right place, if we'll set ourselves apart and put him in the right place and seek ye first the kingdom of God, that word, that Bible verse says, all these things will be added unto you. You won't have, you know, do you want to know how to get everything that your heart desires? Put God first. He'll give you everything that you want. Put him in the right place. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, even so much more as you see the day, day approaching. Listen, there's coming a time when we're about to open these church doors back up. Some of you need to honor God for your presence. You, you, you may have not ever came to church. I know there's a, out of all the thousands of people that are watching messages online, almost every pastor I've seen has got six, seven, eight, nine hundred, two thousand, three thousand views on their sermons each week. Hardly any of those pastors preach to a congregation much over 500. Can I tell you something? There's a lot of people that's watching that don't go to church. Can I tell you, it's time when this thing comes back, when we go back to working, it's time for you to make a choice. I'm going to assemble together with the people of God, and I'm going to worship God, and because there is power in assembly. Listen, we, but there's still power anywhere you're at, but there's something special about when you get together with the people of God, worshiping the God of all glory. We need to honor the coming together of God to worship. We need to get involved. We need to do all these things. Listen, I'm done this morning. But we are at a crossroads of choice. The choice this morning is yours. What's it going to be? If you're lost this morning, you've got a choice to make. You can choose to follow Jesus, accept him as Lord and Savior, and make him Lord and Savior of your life, and have a promised future, power for the present, or you can live in sin and expect condemnation and death and destruction. The choice is yours. To me, there's not much of a choice there. But God has given you that choice. What are you going to make? Are you going to accept it? Listen, he offers it freely. You don't have to do anything. Just accept it. And listen, when you accept it, he'll change a lot of things in your heart and in your life. To all those saints that I've preached to this morning in the church, how is this going to change you? How is all that we just went through, how is it going to change you? Everything we go through changes a little bit. We're going to get back to the way that God wants us to be. And we're going to live how God wants us to live. For those that have been faithful, and hey, man, I want you to know there's many of you out there that's listening that are faithful, faithful, faithful. Just keep being faithful. I want to commend you. Thank you for the church that is faithful to serve him, that's faithful to come, that's faithful to give. Praise God for you. Keep doing what you're doing. God is well pleased. Hey, man, God is well pleased with you. And you know this. If you're doing all those things, you're receiving the blessings of God. For those of you that may not be where you need to be, there's a choice for you to make. Come to repent, just as Hezekiah did, and turn and let God change your life.
The choice is yours. Would you make it today? Let us pray. I love you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the time of preaching. Pray that it would use it, Lord, for your honor and your glory. Help us, Lord, to be a, a witness and a blessing to this community, to this church. Lord, let you, let you be, get all the honor and glory out of everything that's done here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, Miss Patricia, Brother T. Let's close us in a song today. Thank you so much, Mr. Patricia, for singing, Mr. Tim, for playing. Thank you, church, for tuning in this morning. Hey, listen, do me a favor. Go share this video. Share it, share it, share it. If you had not already done so, that it might reach others that may need to hear this word of God. We love you, church. We miss you. We're looking forward to seeing you again. God bless you.